Richard Tewitt, the homeless man convicted in 2004 of killing a 12-year-old girl, is about to be a free man. On Friday, a retrial jury acquitted Tewitt of the 1998 murder of Stephanie Crow, a crime for which Crow's own brother and his friends originally had been accused. Tewitt was a transient in the Escondido area. Spots of Stephanie's blood were found on his clothing, but that was later determined to be the result of contamination of the crime scene. Tewitt will be released from prison this week. And 15 years after Stephanie's death, this case has people in law enforcement and justice pretty divided. Tewitt's attorney, immediately after Friday's verdict, said he thought all along Richard Tewitt did not do the crime. He told me that's why he decided to represent Tewitt in the, pre, in the retrial, that is, for almost no compensation. Attorney Brad Patton is a guest tonight in the KOSI News at 6. Brad, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you. The first question is, what were your thoughts immediately having heard the jury's not guilty verdict? Well, I was excited about the verdict and excited for Richard, giving him the opportunity to basically get back with his family and to have an injustice righted. I was sitting right behind you and him. I didn't notice any real emotional reaction on his part, but what did he tell you, if anything? Well, Richard is a very um, uh, private person, basically. But uh, we had talked before this, talked about the options. And Richard gave me a big smile when this came down. I put my arm around him. And he turned back, as you know, to look at his sister, who had been with him throughout this matter, uh, throughout the trial. And uh, that was a very warm uh, expression on his behalf. What's next for him now? I mean, where's, where's he headed? What do you, what do you say his plans were? Well, the family has a plan in, in place, and so they're looking forward to getting him back uh, with them, and he will be in good hands and taken care of. He's going to need some privacy to be able to make this transition. Because he was homeless before, is that correct? He was, right. yes. So yes. the family's taking him in? That is correct. He suffers from some mental illness of some sort, some behavioral disorders. How is he going to get help dealing with those? Well, Richard is aware of the situation. He has been on his medications in the past, and the family is working with him as well. And Richard and I have spoken about this, and he's uh, looking forward to getting out and prepared to get on his medications, continue on his medications. And he's just perfectly normal and, uh, and handles things very well as long as the medications are in place. Now the big picture, Brad. What does this verdict teach us about, first, the justice system in San Diego County? Well, it's been a long haul, no question about it. The justice system has worked um, to the credit of Ben Coleman, the attorney who took the matter to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and got the conviction, original conviction reversed, and then giving us the opportunity to go back and present this matter to a jury. And that jury really, in a very short matter, listening to the evidence, listening to the law, and came back and found him not guilty. You know, they, they were out, so to speak, for three days, technically, but they only spent a few hours together. Correct. In they, deliberation. That is correct. I they was were, in the hallway. They were only together for a couple of hours. There was a fire drill, day two of jury mm -hmm. deliberation. They had to leave early. I had the sense they had already had a verdict that on, on mm -hmm. Thursday. Well, yes, they were only probably in deliberation maybe five, a little over five hours. Um, had they had a full day to deliberate, um, this may have only been a one-day deliberation process. This was a very astute jury. They paid close attention to the evidence. They listened to the law. They went in, and uh, they did the right thing. I mean, there was no question that uh, applying the law to these facts as they were presented with resulted in this verdict in a quick fashion. What changed? Was it your work? Was it new evidence? I mean, 15 years later, and others were arrested and almost prosecuted, and then he was convicted and then acquitted and retried, and then in a matter of two, three hours, they come back with a verdict. What changed? Well, one of the primary things that changed is we were not given the chance in the first trial to address some key evidence because it came up at the last minute. And as a result of that, that became a primary focus of the prosecution in that first case. Uh, when the conviction was reversed, the matter came back for trial, we had ample time to be able to get that evidence addressed. It was addressed and presented to this jury, and that and was... And it was? It was the issues concerning the contamination. Explain that to our audience. We only have a few seconds, but can you? Okay. Um, the contamination was clearly as a result of the crime scene investigation. There was a viewing and evaluation of both shirts, and the viewing by two very trained professionals 
Uh, they saw no blood. They did alternate life source evaluations. There was no blood. They did a very uh, sensitive screening for blood with fluorescin. No blood showed up. And then they used items which were at the crime scene that were not protected, the tripod, rulers, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And they testified, Durgan testified very clearly that he was 100% sure that blood was not on the shirt prior Before. to the testing. Are you 100% sure yes. your client was innocent? I am. All right. All right. See Bradley Patton, thanks for being our Thank guest you. today on the Good. KOSI News at 6. Thank you very much. All right.